So as mentioned, I told you that the next part of the lesson would be about the industry and market sources of opportunity. So for this one, this particular lesson would be about the micro environment. So for the micro environment, we have the suppliers of your inputs, we have the customers, we have your employees, competitors, and the public. So what do we mean by this one? Pag sinabi ulit natin micro-environmental factors, these are about the resource availability and how it is used by the company. These are things that you can control within your enterprise and uh, these are things that you could make quick adjustments to. So when we say suppliers, suppliers are uh, provide businesses with the materials that they need to carry out their business activities. It is important that you have good relationships when it comes to your suppliers because most of the time, sila yung uh, magsasabi kung ano yung magiging endgame ng presyohan na meron ka dun sa inyong business. So what you need to do is build relationships with them. And as much as possible with these relationships, this could also um, create um, biases um, dun sa inyong supply chain. For example, dahil... Um, mas matagal ka na na nag-order and usually mas mabilis ka nagbabayad kay supplier A, mas kakayanin niya mag-adjust ng presyo niya compared dun kay supplier B na ngayon ka lang nag-first uh, time order mo sa kanya and you're trying to negotiate a price na gugustuhin mo but she, uh, he or she won't budge. Okay? Pero si supplier A, willing siya na ibigay sa'yo kasi nga alam niya na nagbabayad ka naman. So those are uh, built um, based on the relationships that you have when it comes to your suppliers. The next one is about your employees. Employees, if a business employs staff without motivation, skills, or experience, it will affect the customer service and ultimately the sales of the enterprise. Now, how are you affected by this one? Always remember that your employees are your greatest assets in the business. At the same time, you're not usually around in the business and you're just giving the orders na ito yung gagawin natin, ito yung operations natin, this is the guide. And usually, the employees are the one who actually run the enterprise. So as much as possible, you need to employ the staff based on what is needed by the enterprise. On my end, personally speaking, I employ staff with good attitude uh, instead of skills. Mas tinitingnan ko talaga ugali. As much as possible, um, you need to employ people that are teachable. Hindi yung nagmamarunong. Yung parang um, willing sila to know more about uh, the processes. Um, they're willing to adjust based on what is needed by the company. Instead, those um, that have zero knowledge or wala at all. So, with those uh, key things na kakailanganin natin with our employees, your business um, operations might change as well. Next is about your competitors. Your competitors are your rivals that you need to compete with the firm in the market and in terms of resources. So kalaban mo yan, hindi lang sa customers mo, kalaban mo din yan sa raw materials and even in the processes that you do. So when we say competitors, you have what we call the direct and the indirect competitors. Your direct competitors are the ones that offers the exact same thing exact same thing as the others. So um, when we say the indirect competitors, they offer the different products but with the similar benefits. So, paano yan? Pag sinabi natin direct competitors, let's say I am a milk tea shop. So all of my direct competitors are all the milk tea shops that surround me. All the milk tea shops out there. So if I am Macau Milk Tea, I have um, Coco, I'm competing with Nakasi, I'm competing with Simple Line, I'm competing with um, Serenity and all the other tea companies. Just Those are my direct competitors. But when I say indirect competitor, given the fact that I am a milk tea shop, it offers the same benefit. Let's say that I market my product as a merienda or a snack and a drink. So my indirect competitors now are all the beverages that are there. So let's say shakes, soft drinks, water, those are my indirect competitor. But I also mentioned that part of my marketing is that it is an alternative snack or merienda. So let's say toron, um, ano pa ba yung mga merienda items? Banana queue, um, barbecue, lahat may queue. 
So, lahat yan nagiging indirect competitor ko. Another thing, yung mga chicheria, yung mga snacks that are available, lahat ng laman ng convenience store ngayon, nagiging indirect competitor mo. Because again, you were able to position your product as um, an alternative snack or drink para doon sa consumers mo. So, whatever gives them that same benefit, even shomai, shomai rice, kung yun yung minamerienda nila, Okay, or that is considered as a snack to them. Okay, since it's under the same benefit, it gives the same benefits and effects to those um, consumers. Then it would now fall as your indirect competitor. Another example that I have right here: Toblerone. Toblerone. Who are the direct competitors? So let's say Hershey's, Cadbury. Yen yung mga direct competitors. Niya. Who is the indirect competitor of Toblerone? So let's say candies. Star patches, a nerds, lahat ng yan yung mga candies that are out there. But your um, how often or uh, san ba natin pala nakikita madalas yung uh, Toblerone? So let's say Valentine's Day, and I said that this is the perfect Valentine's gift to your loved one. Who is now my indirect competitor? And now competing with flowers, teddy bears, other food products, or other gifts that are marketed out there. Those are my indirect competitors because you're uh, in the same market na pareho kayo ng benefit na ibibigay para doon sa mga customers niyo. You're now indirectly comp uh, competing with them. So public. The public now is any group that has an actual or potential interest in or impact on a company's ability to achieve its objectives. Simply assume that this is the friend that you have that um, kapag tinanong mo, saan tayo kakain? Ang sasabihin sa'yo ay kahit saan. They don't have um, uh, an idea of what exactly they want or loyalty towards a brand or towards um, a particular company. But they have um, um, a knowledge kung ano yung gusto nila as of the moment. Kasi pag nagsuggest ka ng pagkain dun sa friend mo na yun, ang sasabihin niya, ay hindi masarap dyan. Huwag dyan. Mahal dyan. Ay, ayoko pala niyan. Okay? Nandun yung hindi siya sure or uncertain siya dun sa kung ano yung gusto niya. But you throw in different options to that person and magsasabi na lang siya, ah, tara, let's go. Dun tayo pupunta. Kasi you already gave the option na best fit dun sa mismo interest niya. Now, what do you do for uh, you as an enterprise? What you do now is to encourage these people to choose you over all your competitors. You could make all the necessary adjustments para at the end of the day, ikaw yung pipiliin. Yung brand mo yung pipiliin, yung mismo person na yun. And that's how you could adjust your overall company strategy. The next one is your customers. Your customers now are the people who buy and use the firm's products and services and are important part of your external micro-environmental. So please do note that customers have different preferences and dislikes. So based on these factors, you could actually make the necessary adjustments based on sa kung ano yung hinahanap nila dun sa mismong produkto. Now, I have an example right here. This is Listerine. Did you know that Listerine was actually marketed differently before? Listerine was actually um, the product that was used by soldiers during the World War. And they um, used nila to sa paan nila. Okay? Ang ginagawa nila, pinang, uh, ginagamit nila to para ma-cure yung athlete's foot na meron sila kasi nagkakaroon ng mga bacteria build up dun sa mismong paa na meron nila. Because whatever clothes that you have when you're a soldier, hindi ka naman nagpapalit eh. Wala kang wardrobe na dala. What you have is a gun and a backpack full of tools and the things or necessary things that you need um, during the war. Pero um, yung damit, pamalit, bihira yan. So nababasa, natutuyo, um, nag nagkakaroon ng build up dun sa paa nila. And the listering company before they marketed this as um, well um, the cure for athletes foot so imagine yung um, pinagbabaran mga paa nila before ay nilalagay mo na sa bibig mo ngayon so this is how customers okay 
perceive a product and paano nagkakaroon ng shift ngayon. But since hindi naman palagi na may gera, okay, hindi palagi na may um, war na nangyayari, what they did was so after the war, they need to shift into um, a different product. So it has the same components na nilalagay nila para makakill yung mga bacteria, but they tried to change the perception of the customers towards their product. So, um, tinanggal na nila yung mga ads nila na para yan sa athlete's foot. Um, hinanap na nila kung sino yung mga um, pwede nilang survive since um, wala na yung gera and all that. Kailangan na nila mag-shift into other customers para naman magkaroon ng survival for the company. And they found out that the same formulation could actually kill the bacteria inside our mouth. So, it's a safer way. That's why it creates something kapag ginagamit natin siya kasi it kills the bacteria buildup dun sa bibig natin. And uh, with that, lahat ng ads nila is targeted na dun sa pag-kill ng mga bacteria na nasa bibig instead na nasa paa. So um, that's how they shifted uh, their customer perception uh, towards the product itself. Okay. Now we need to look at the micro level as well. So we have the industry sources of opportunity. So industry uh, sources of opportunity is um, how you would define an industry and how you could find other opportunities or analyze the industry as a whole and find um, the need na kailangan nila. So we usually see um, Jollibee versus McDonald's, um, Microsoft versus Apple, and um, these are things that are very familiar to us. Through keen assessments of competitive brands within each industry, uh, in this way, you could get you can get business opportunities by forcing on areas they don't own or products they don't serve, but needed by the customers. So, ano ba yung mga fulfillments ang ginagawa nila? Okay. Windows on its own have um, create a massive company na talagang um, lahat binild nila. But when Apple reinvented the game that um, they created an ecosystem for the Apple users na sila lang mismo yung gumagamit ng ecosystem na yun, um, yung OS nagbago, a certain application is designed for them also, um, as well as dito. Um, in the fast food industry, um, they know that McDonald's is a giant uh, global company. And when um, pumunta sila dito sa Pilipinas, they didn't know na hindi pala sila magna number one. And nag number one is si Jollibee. Because in the fast food game, mas nauna si Jollibee when it comes to providing us the, the chicken, the drumstick, the thighs, and the breast na usually kinakain ng mga Pilipino. Because we have this great love for um, for that particular product. Okay? Para dun sa manok. Okay? Another thing is, um as... Uh, I hope that you are familiar with the tagline of Jollibee, Bida ang saya and langhap sarap. Okay? Lahat yan ay um, designed for the Filipino taste buds. That's why it's more sweeter, um, pati yung smell, yung aroma na meron din si Jollibee is designed for the Filipinos to enjoy. Kaya kahit na nasa same industry sila, meron silang magkakaibang functions, meron silang ibang things na in-offer sa market that is different but needed by the customers. Okay? The next one is about the consumer preferences and the consumer peak and consumer perception. When we say consumer preferences, this is the taste of a particular group of people. So we have different tastes when it comes to clothing, music, uh, food that we like. Meron tayo kanya-kanya nating gusto. I cannot assume that in your entire class, you love chicken. Some of you might might, uh, might not be eating chicken, okay? but some of you love chicken. I, I cannot assume na lahat kayo ay gusto ng gulay. Some of you might enjoy gulay, but some of you might not be uh, even eating gulay. So, yun yung mga preferences na tinitingnan naman natin. Now, once we say consumer dislike, what are the irritants? Ano yung mga kinaiiritahan ng mga customers ninyo? There is always opportunity knowing what customers don't like. Okay? This is how you provide solution. What are the different factors that irritate them? What are the things that they dislike in a situation? For example, Grab, 
uh, food panda, okay? Yan namang mga services na yan ay hindi nag exist before. But because of the consumer, okay, dislike, because they want to provide a solution for a faster medium for career services, a faster medium for us to enjoy our food, a faster services, uh, a service um, to provide us the kinds of products that we buy or we ship. So, um, nandiyan ngayon sila LBC, andyan yung mga gantong career services. Kasi if, um, let's say, wala na masyado nagpo-post office ngayon. Okay? Konti na lang yung mga nagpo-post office. I received before a snail mail and um, bago nakarating sa akin yung snail mail na yun, yung mismo sulat is um, it took it took them four months okay, para mabigay sa akin yung snail mail ko. Okay? Kasi ganun katagal dati yung, um, yung, yung mga um, sulat or yung mga career para dumating sa atin yung mga um, products na hinihingi natin or yung mga information na dapat nare-receive natin agad. So just imagine if you shopped online tapos four months bago mo makuha yung mismong product, okay, may iray pa ka na or baka nakalimutan mo na na binili mo siya. That's why ito, sila Shopee, sila Zada, they have different career services now that provides a faster service that could provide the same service but faster. It's providing the solutions to the irritants of your customers. And that's how I, uh, um, we want you to explore then when it comes to your innovations. Ano kaya yung mga bagay na small things na nakakairita pero dahil nagtakaroon ng build-up, hindi natin siya ma-avoid. Now, as I've mentioned, the, the story of uh, Listerine, that's how we have consumer perception. Perception now, sometimes, product is changed by the way consumer perceive them. Dahil lang sa binigyan siya ng ibang meaning ng mga customers ninyo, nagkaroon din siya ng ibang appeal para din sa other uh, audiences or other target market. So this is convincing the customers that the product is the right one for them or that is the one for you. You need my product. Okay? That's why we see Starbucks as a high-end product kahit naman um, technically speaking, hindi naman siya yung talagang high-end na product. Okay? But we see it as a, a symbol of statue, uh, status. Rather. Um, nakikita natin siya as a symbol for the rich and uh, uh, high-end the mga class kasi nga um, parang Mahal and uh, yun yung nakita na na-symbol. Uh, marami yung nagsabi na it's, it's expensive. Okay? Kaya consumer perception now change throughout time. But slowly and surely, um, mas nagiging affordable na for a lot of people and nawawala na yung consumer perceptions na yun. We see, uh, for example, some uh, Apple users might see the product as the superior phone or the superior product that is out there kasi sila yung mga users. Okay? But for Windows or Android users, pwedeng sabihin nila na, no, oh, we're the superior ones kasi sila nga yung users of the product. Okay? Now, going back to this, we have uh, the macro and the micro environment. As I've mentioned, when we say macro environment, macro environment is about the social and cultural, political, environmental, ecological, and technological factors. But when we say micro environmental, this is about your industry and the market sources of opportunity, how you could have different products within the industry na kinagangalawan mo. Let's say you are in the coffee industry, you are in the clothing industry, fast food industry. How could you change the game? What is the gap and how could you find opportunities? This is where we look at customers, suppliers, competitors, employees, and the public. Now, when we say uh, customers, this is how we could look at their peaks, their preferences, and perceptions towards other products. Okay? That would end this slide actually for our um, the first part of our 3S of opportunity, which is the um, um, seeking part. So 
So the next lesson is about the screening of opportunity, how we could do the personal screening, opportunity screening matrix, and I will be introducing to you guys the pre-feasibility study. So thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for listening.